welcome all today we shall see classification of shell and tube heat exchanger as we know that shell and tube heat exchanger are built of shell and tubes the tubes are mounted by means of tube sheets or shell incorporates tubes and these tubes are mounted by means of tube sheets so a classification of shell and tube heat exchanger is done on the basis of variation of basic type that are available what is the difference the difference is constructional feature okay construction feature as well as differential thermal expansion between shell and tubes so this is the basis that is taken to classify various types of shell and tube heat exchanger so whatever the shell and tube heat exchanger that exist their classification is made based on constructional features that are available with the shell and tube heat exchanger as well as any differential thermal expansion between shell and tube may also or is also responsible for the classification of shell and tube heat exchanger so this exchanger are classified as fixed tube sheet exchanger floating head heat exchanger the floating head heat exchanger is again classified as internal floating and outside packed floating moreover the third type u tube heat exchanger and reboiler or kettle type heat exchanger this kettle type or reboiler heat exchanger is sub classified again as with internal floating head and u tube as we know that the name shell and tube heat exchanger the accessories or the part that make the shell and tube heat exchanger is remain same okay the shell shell cover tubes tube sheet channel channel cover then baffle stire rod pass partition all these accessories are the main part of this shell and tube heat exchanger so classification is only based on construction okay how it has been constructed moreover differential thermal expansion between shell and tube okay shell and tube as we know that through shell as well as through uh, through shell and tubes the liquid or fluid passes the hot liquid cold liquid passes and between them the heat exchange takes place and therefore the material of construction material of construction of shell and tube should be as such that it should sustain differential thermal expansion so as many heat exchanger that may be constructed based on constructed with a different material suppose a shell is made from different material of construction while uh, the tube is made from different material of construction so in such a situation what happened if the two different materials are being used for making the shell and tube then differential thermal expansion may be a cause for its breakage or such a uh, such shell and tube heat exchanger could not last long or its efficiency would be lost soon and that is why to maintain or there should be no differential thermal expansion or uh, it should have the same thermal expansion the material of construction of shell as well as of tube should be same should be same so that the expansion when the heat flows through or the material or the fluid that flows through which is hot suppose then the uh, thermal expansion of the material could remain same okay so first simplest type of fixed tube heat exchanger is as shown here okay so this is the simplest type of fixed uh, simplest type of tube sheet heat exchanger okay fixed tube sheet heat exchanger so name itself indicate fixed tube that means the tubes are fixed where this fix uh, tubes are fixed these tubes are fixed to shell okay this tube fi uh, tube sheets are fixed to shell so on the either side of this fixed tube sheet exchanger the tube sheets are fixed okay tube sheets are fixed to shell you can see you see it over here moreover this tube sheet extend little beyond the uh, shell so this would act okay this portion would act 
as a flange support in order to uh, attach the channels okay so this would act as a flange support to attach the channels moreover this shell is having two opening one for the inlet of fluid and other for the outlet of fluid as the material of construction okay as the material of construction the shell and tube sheet, uh, sheet material must be weldable okay whenever we are taking the material of construction or whenever we are using a, uh, taking a material of construction for making tubes as well as a shell the material should be weldable okay material should be weldable otherwise this welding is not possible as this tube sheet is welded welded to the tube uh, shell okay this tube sheet is welded to shell and therefore the material should be chosen as such wherever the welding is required it should be weldable okay and that is why the material of construction chosen over here is weldable moreover this channel okay this channel okay this channel is having two openings or two nozzles one for the inlet of fluid which which would move through the tube side okay so on either side there is one opening one for the inlet of fluid which would move from the flu uh, tube side and other opening for at the uh, other opening uh, on the other side of the uh, tube sheet heat exchanger for the removal of fluid which may come from the tube side okay so here when we think of that if this is not having any kind of pass partition so in this case the fluid that moves from the tube side would make one pass only okay so there is no pass partition over here there is no pass partition over here and therefore the fluid that moves from the tube side or through the channel in, uh, from the channel through the tube side would make only one pass moreover the tube or the fluid that is moving from the shell side would also make only one pass as the shell is provided with one opening for one opening for the entry of the fluid and other opening for the removal of the fluid of course we can say that shell side okay shell side passes okay the shell side passes more than two okay more than two are rarely used and this is what a limitation okay there there is no limitation on the tube side however there is no limitation on the tube side on the shell side more than two passes is not possible while uh, on the tube side okay on the shell side there uh, there, uh, there is a restriction that only two passes are possible while on the tube side there may be more than two passes are possible but here in this simplest construction it has been shown that there is no pass partition so whatever the fluid that enters through the channel into the tubes would make only one pass okay would make only one pass Thank you.